Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. I don't. I think I know everybody who is here, but I'm not sure who's going to be online watching this live. I hope it's coming through. And uh, perhaps not watching it live, but watching it later as it's uh, available later. So uh, in case there's anybody I don't know out there in cyber world, my name is David Mertz. I have the privilege of serving as president of Great Plains Lutheran High School. I also have the privilege of welcoming you who are here tonight in the room, here in our GPL music room. Also welcoming those who are watching live online and those who will be watching later. Thank you for taking the time to be with us tonight or whenever the case might be. And, and thank you also for your participation. I'm guessing that many, if not all of you, have participated in some way in, in offering input for our study, whether that was through a personal interview or through a paper <coughs> survey that was uh, submitted or through an online survey. All of that is important, and I'd like to come back to that in, in just a moment. And I'd like to start tonight our, our gathering, our meeting, and this presentation. We'll do it in the Lord's name. We'll do it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And also with a thought from the, the verses that were chosen as the basis for our theme for this effort. And the theme of our effort is united in praise. And as we looked at that, we were looking at Psalm 86, verses 11 and 12. And the first part of that says, Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. And of course, God teaches us his way above all in his word in the word of his Son, in the word that reveals his Son, and the way of salvation. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. We know that there is no other way. It is through him, and he has done it all, and he has done it all perfectly for us as our perfect substitute and Savior. And God is a God who also shows us our way through this life. He reveals that to us in his word. As we want to know how to live to his glory, we can look and find guidance in his word as well. And we thank and we praise him for that too. But there are other times, other situations in life where we say, still, Lord, teach us your way, but we're not going to find it specifically laid out for us in his word. And I think we do that again tonight. We do that also through this study. through Not through a specific Bible verse that we're looking at or looking to, but through the, through the godly and, and in many cases, seasoned counsel of God's people. And that's why we came to you, and that's why we asked you for input and reaction to ideas, to concepts, to, to timing, and so forth, that we might gather input, that we might gather wisdom, that we might gather insight. And so our prayer tonight is also, and as we go forward, Lord, teach us your will through the collective resources of your people through the wisdom of your people, through the experience of your people, through the insight of your people, through the advice of your people. And, and now we have the opportunity to, to see some of the fruit of that as we have Jeff Davis with Cornerstone Stewardship Ministry with us tonight to, to give us the kind of summary of what they found as they went through all that information that came from you, from God's people, in regard to the ideas and the concepts that were put forward. So we do that too tonight, again, with a prayer, Lord, teach us your way, that we may rely on your faithfulness, your faithfulness in showing us the way of salvation, your faithfulness in showing us the way to honor and glorify you in this life, and your faithfulness in using the, the gifts of your people that can guide us as well. And as those verses go on, give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name, I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. And it is in God's faithfulness that we are indeed united in praise. And in his name that we meet tonight. And in his name that we also offer this prayer as we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing all safely here who are here tonight. Thank you for being with those who are watching and listening. 
and thank you for the, the collective insight and wisdom of your people. The experience that you have given them over the years is a blessing to them, and it's also now a blessing to us as they have offered different insights and so forth, and we now gather that information together, and we ask that you would bless it, that you would bless the presentation tonight, that you would bless the information, and then also bless us as we go forward in your name. Lead us and guide us by your word, by your people, so that we might honor you in the decisions that are made and the efforts that, that go forward. Uh, be with us tonight in our Savior's name. Amen. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to Jeff, and he's going to talk a little bit more about his background and, and how he comes to be here, as well as sharing the, the study results with us. So, okay. All thank yours, you. Jeff. Appreciate that. It's good to be here. Uh, welcome, and, and thank you for being here and, and reiterating what President Merce said. Uh, uh, I think almost all of you were involved in some way, shape, or form uh, through this awareness and readiness study. So thank you for that, uh, giving your input. And it's wise counsel of uh, gathering as many people together as we possibly can and ascertaining what the, the next steps are for you as the Lord unfolds your, your plans. Uh, my bio is up there. I, I'm not going to read through it. Uh, uh, I was in the public ministry for 22 years, serving at two different area Lutheran high schools. And uh, someone asked me uh, earlier this evening, well, why, why do you enjoy what you're doing? And I said, well, it, it really is a, I get my kicks in, in helping organizations go from point A to point B, fulfilling their vision statement. And we're just one small piece in those steps, whatever that vision might be, in helping out uh, churches and schools, Lutheran churches and schools on that uh, vision casting uh, road that they, they go down. So. It's uh, good to be here at Great Plains, and it'll be interesting um, as I start. It'll be interesting as you look down three, six, three months, six year, or three years or six years from now, uh, how the Lord unfolds His plans for your ministry here. Uh, my opening comments uh, is, is number one, just thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Uh, we appreciated the uh, uh, help that we received from. President Mertz, the Mission Advancement Team of Janine and Paul, uh, the board support that we had, uh, the folks that we interviewed, it was a joy to connect with you and, and uh, learn about your ministry and, and your hopes and dreams as well for Great Plains Lutheran High School. Uh, it, it, it was a, a, a good experience working with your team here at Great Plains. Uh, we did not have any major issues, challenges. Uh, Michael and I needed something, it was there, so that's much appreciated, and speaks well of, of your readiness, and ought to be modified. In the case booklet, and that's, that's really what we were up against and, and assessing, and I'm hoping that all of you at some point have seen this, and in the case booklet, uh, it was identified three major projects, your, your chapel, worship, music wing, I'll call it. There were some kitchen modifications and administrative offices in there. Uh, that was project one. Project two was an athletic complex outside field track, uh, moving your current fields to the east more. And then uh, concession stands, bleachers, and, and the whole nine yards there. And then the third project was uh, an additional second gymnasium kind of hooked on to your current gym for additional practice space. So that's what we assessed based on the case statement, the case booklet. And uh, again, support exists, but those plans ought to be modified. And you see the focus there, one, two, three. The financial goal in terms of, of modification would be that 1.8 to 2.75 potential. So the case booklet had a $9 million price tag, and, and we're coming back and saying, um, we're not quite there in terms of, of that dollar amount. So a smaller goal of $1.8 million uh, would be more uh, feasible at this time. So the remaining portion of the presentation now is I'm going to assess uh, why we're recommending, instead of the $9 million with the three projects, a lower dollar amount. Jeanine. 
Mr. Davis, could you just project a little bit louder so that the people um, online are able to hear you better? The Thank volume's you. a little low from when I checked. Okay. I, I have that. We probably should have mic'd me, but that's okay. I'll I'll step it up a little bit. Thanks, Judy. So blessings of uh, Great Plains Lutheran. This came, and, and it, as as you look at the the title, the strengths are why GPL is special, and and then confidential survey. Uh, I'll explain that confidential a little bit, but these are some of the blessings, and and these were remarks that these personal interviews people just gave from uh, their heads. So they didn't have choices to choose from. It was just, these. this is what popped into their heads. Uh, God's Word, 29% said that's really what makes the school special. And there could have been multiple responses from each person. Uh, the second is uh, teachers at 21%. And then caring attitude, 13%. If there was something that really came through strongly, it was caring attitude in teachers. Teachers caring attitude. It was like kissing cousins. It was, it was two things always came together. If you talked about teachers, you talked about caring attitude. So, Mr. Brown, please convey that to your, your teaching staff. That, that really, really came through um, as, as twins there. And then dormitories. Uh, you are one of our special well schools in having do uh, of the availability of dormitories. Uh, not all of our area Lutheran high schools have that capability, and that's a special blessing that you have. You, uh, you made an investment with that. Uh, you made that part of your ministry to include that, so you can serve a, a wider area. Our methodology. Uh, we have a, we had an A and R task force planning group, and uh, they're listed in here. I would like to recognize them as soon as I can find my list. Here we go. Pete Bargraff was the chair. Michael Lent, uh, publicity chair. Zach Thick helped out. Uh, President Mertz and um, Pastor Lindhorst and Janine were. The, uh, the awareness and running this study. So we relied on them to get the information out, make contact, and uh, again, want to recognize that. Uh, the case statement, this was prepared and then sent out with surveys. Uh, there are five surveys listed here, and I'd like to explain the five surveys and what all makes up of them. Uh, survey number one was personal interviews, and we identified 50, 55 people for that. We ended up uh, personally interviewing, meeting with, or telephone, 39 of those 50. And uh, uh, along with myself, it was a colleague of mine, Michael Fuchs. Uh, Michael is uh, from Dallas, Texas. And whenever we're doing an awareness or readiness study, we always have two pairs of eyes coming in. And uh, when we're done, we then kind of compare notes. And, and just get a better flavor. So there are some things that I saw that he didn't and vice versa. And uh, it's a team approach is, is what I'm trying to say. And it's a, 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 a more effective approach that way. Survey number two, we uh, identified 297 current supporters and friends of Great Plains Lutheran High School. I think you have over 500 in your database of, of various uh, uh, folks uh, from uh, not only your association, but throughout the country who have uh, what we would say are friends of Great Plains. Then survey three, we connected with all the pastors from the associations and association and gave them a survey to complete. And then we also sent out to all councils of the association a survey asking them to complete that. And then the final survey was an online survey. So we designed a survey that was on your website, and then we announced that, publicized that through your various publications. People could click on that, and then take the survey, and then it was recorded online. They also could download that uh, um, uh, case statement, and I believe that's still on the website. So if you want to go back and circle back with that and check some things out, you can to make some comparisons. So a lot of data was requested. Uh, we didn't have 100% return, but we never do. Uh, and uh, we do work with the data that we have. And so that's another point of, of emphasis for tonight. 
I'm going to be sharing a lot of graphs and tables and the, the <coughs> surveys and tables that you'll see are on a scale of one to five. Five is high or supportive. And so any, any numbers that you see, five is the highest, one is the lowest. Uh, in terms of responses, as I mentioned, 39 from confidential. The long form survey, uh, 63 was returned, and that's a 21% rate of return. Ironically, that's what we typically see, and it just turns out that way. Uh, we usually uh, ask for 300, and anywhere from 250 to 350 is sent out, depending on the high school, and uh, it just works out. I mean, that was one of the first things that the group asked, what, what kind of rate are we going to get? We said, we well, usually see about 20%, and that's where it just hit. The uh, pastor surveys coming back from the congregations, there were our 43 pastors. Uh, we received 24, 64%. I, I thought that was on the low side. I was expecting a little bit more. I'll circle back to that as well. Uh, the council surveys, uh, not normally something that we do, but in this case we did just because uh, your, your, your association is so spread out with congregations that we wanted to connect with the leaders within the congregation. And there were three key questions that I wanted to, to analyze from those leaders. Uh, I was curious about, and I'll have a couple graphs for you on that. And then we uh, only had 18 online surveys. Uh, it was kind of interesting. We had uh, three uh, pick ones. And it just kind of happened that someone wanted to have some fun and entered that, but we, we were able to take that. So that's our terminology, our source, our survey, surveys. Uh, I'm going to stop here and just answer any questions that you might have. I'll have three sections like this where I'll stop. And uh, so are there any questions up to this point? That's fine. Yes. Um, just going back to the number, um, the dollar amount that was suggested, is that taking into account if the school decided to borrow as well? Good question. So the, the question is, the dollar amount that we're recommending, and it, it, all it is is a recommendation at this time, I'll give you a data mm -hmm. as to why we're, we're doing that. Uh, is, does that include a borrowed amount? No, that would be, I, I, I'm confidently standing here tonight to say, our recommended goal is $1.8 million that you could expect to receive in over and above gifts for three years. So that would be from God's people. Now, that's our best guess. Obviously, it's no guarantee, but based on our history, based on what we heard, 1.8 would be that number. The upper number would be 2.8. Later on, I'll explain why we're hedging a little bit with that 2.5, 2.8, perhaps even 3 million. If you decided to go forward with a building program and, and said, let's take on some additional debt, then that could be upped a little bit. But that's where your board leaders come in and say, all right, how much debt do we want to take on as a school? Right now, we're a little bit over a million in debt. So if you took on another million, then you'd be servicing $2 million of debt. Uh, obviously, rates, terms, all that would be, be open for further discussion by the time any construction would be completed. Any other questions? Yeah, all right. Moving forward, this is what we call our key issue chart. And uh, there are seven key issues, and we take a look at these issues, and we score those issues and, and use those as a litmus test, as a standard, to say, is the school ready to go forward? So it's not really a yes or no question, because there are a lot of variables that play a part in, in making a decision to go forward. <clears throat> So we've identified over the years seven key issues that we use and weigh in making a recommendation as to next steps or if a high school should go into a capital campaign. 
So I'd like to explain the seven issues and then I'll, I'll give data to support each one. Number one, uh, is there a sufficient donor base to carry out the campaign? So in your case statement, a $9 million campaign, do you have enough donors, enough of God's people to give toward that project goal? Number two, are we able to identi identify half of the leadership gift prospects or is there an indication of broad financial support? So that means basically what we were looking for was roughly on a $9 million campaign, we were looking for at least $4.5 million in lead gifts, in single gifts from folks to support a campaign that size. And, and if we don't have enough of the half, then the, the, the fallback, the other option is, okay, if we can't do it on the smaller numbers, can we do it on volume? So if you think of, of many small gifts versus a few large gifts. So we assessed it at, at that point as well. Number three, volunteer leadership is a, is a key, key component for a campaign at the high school level, uh, mainly because you just have a lot of spinning plates that are going on. You think of all the congregations that you have in your association, all the individual supporters that you have, and then if we want to connect with foundations, businesses, what, what may you have throughout this area, uh, there are an awful lot of volunteers needed. Number four focuses on the, the uh, projects of the case statement. So in your case, those three projects did they resonate with people? Did they get excited about it? Were they passionate about those projects? Is that something that, we, yes, we, we really need that. So was there excitement there? Number five, are there any issues outstanding uh, with your high school? And, and mostly that's external type of issues. Something that's out there and uh, you're struggling with your public image, whatever that might be. Number six, uh, is it an opportunity for your, your, your friends, your givers, to say this is an opportunity to respond joyfully to the gospel in connecting with uh, the high school and giving a gift? And then finally, uh, is the timing good for whatever reason? And timing, it, it could be a, a various things. I'm going to give you one variable to, tonight that it's not good timing, but it's just a small, small variable. It's not going to make or break anything, but it's part of, of that you simply have no control over, but it's there. So it's a, a timing issue. Now, as you look at the seven issues, the top two are really, um, I, I don't want to say really key, but they are key because they're, they're related to where the dollar is going to come from. And especially when you're looking at a $9 million project, you want to make sure, do we have sound support for that type of project, of that type of dollar amount project? Now, on the right side, instead of saying yes or no, it's yes, no, maybe. Uh, yes is green, no is red, and maybe is yellow. So if you think of a, a stoplight, red, yellow, green, uh, those are the indicators that we give. And certainly there are wiggle room within each one. Uh, obviously, we'd like to see all green. And if we'd have all green, it'd be full steam ahead, let's go. In your case, based with the present case statement of $9 million, those three major projects, you can see that the first three are red, that we did not see support for that with those three key issues. Uh, number five is a yes. There, there were no major issues that really popped up. Uh, one that's, that I questioned, but we really moved that to, to one and two. And then you see the three maybes. Four, six, and seven would be the maybes. So what we did is, based on the data, and this is all data driven, we inputted the data, <clears throat> graphed it for easy visual seeing, gave it a number, and then compared those seven issues. And what I'm going to share beginning now is my case of support to say 
we believe you should scale down your projects and it should be a, a minimum of 1.8 in gifts given. Okay? So uh, just to, to help you out here, key issues, donor base, I'm going to back up the slide. You see the key issue, donor base. So I'll have three or four slides on each one of these key <coughs> issues. So with the uh, question here, this is question three, describe your level of support for each of the campaign concepts. And then on each of the slides, I'll have where that where the data is coming from. So this is the long form survey. That's that group of 300 that we sent out. And based on those responses, you can see that 4.1 was a score for the worship auditorium band choir rooms, 3.1 for the athletic fields, and 3.2 for the second gym. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to measure through the surveys was what's the priority basis of your three projects? Because each project had somewhat of a hefty price tag to it. So it was interesting, the four surveys almost mirrored each other with, with the same results. And so you're going to see this pattern up here that worship and, and band choir rooms received the most weight. Then the second gym received the second most weight, but it was down anywhere from 0.8 to 1.2, 1.1. And then athletic complex came in third. All four surveys made that same conclusion. So that was, that was really interesting, at least if you're a, a numbers guy and data kind of interests you, I thought, wow, that's, that's odd. Uh, but I think it's telling us a, a plain message. The focus on the projects is really to go with, with uh, the funds for the worship auditorium band choir. That ought to be your focus. Continuing on with the donor base, this is the confidential, confidential survey. So this is the one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, they came in very similar. And, and it was interesting that these two projects here were always a tenth or two tenths apart. And there always was a good size gap between these two and that one. Next slide. This is from the long form survey. What's your hope for congregational involvement? 3.1. And the, the question was about uh, if we were to begin a campaign, what is your hope for your congregation to be involved in the campaign? And uh, in, in the confidential interview, you would explain that. Uh, this number I thought was a, a little low. I was expecting a little higher. And uh, there's going to be a few more slides that kind of bear that out. And, and that was um, somewhat of a, of a red flag in, in, in my head. We can analyze it coming away uh, a little bit. Donor base again. Where does Great Plains fit into your giving priorities? Uh, this is the confidential survey. Uh, 18 said very high, medium uh, 7, and then low is, is 1. And I'm not sure why that's not adding up to 39. I just realized that now. So don't ask me that question, because I don't know, because I just found it myself. But uh, the data is correct. Um, yeah. Next slide. Uh, here's where identifying gift prospects. And one of the questions is, was, what do you consider uh, would be a gift if you were asked today? This is from the long form survey. And where would your giving range fall into? Now it's kind of hard to see, so I'll read these. Uh, this first one is up to $1,800 over three years. We had 25 respondents there. Up to 3,600, looks like about nine. Up to 7,200, 
two or three, up to 14,400, up to 25,000, we had about three, and then we had a few unable or unwilling to support. Uh, we're, we're not overly concerned about the grouping style. Um, certainly we're, we're collectively interested in the dollar amount. Uh, the other key thing would be these two here, unable or unwilling. If we have a lot of that's unwilling, that's telling us something, that they're not going to support it financially. We might like the project, but we're not going to financially support it for whatever reason. Or we may not like the project, and we're not going to support it either. This is from the confidential survey, 39 responses, and we asked the same question. What's your estimated support with a gift over three years? Uh, here we had over 100,000. A total was 900,000 then from this group. Here up to 100,000, and those gifts came to 200, up to 50,000, up to 25,000, and then you can see how it, it scales back there. So we added up that collective total, and there'll be another slide coming down uh, toward the end as to what that total amount is. Uh, gift prospects from the council survey, what's your hope for your congregation's involvement? And uh, that was a, a, a key question just because, again, if you're going to be making, if you're going to be implementing a campaign, you're going to be making use of congregations to be one of the vehicles, the tools, if you will, uh, to connect with people. The results here are, are not favorable. 2.67 came back from the council, and we had eight who indicated we don't see our congregation involved at all. Now, there may be various reasons for that. We may have to do some education on the front end to explain to congregations how this is important for ministry and how they can be involved. Uh, there may have been confusion with the question where council uh, guys are sitting down and saying, they're asking us to do a campaign. We are struggling with our own financials. How can that happen? It's a no. It, we, we simply don't know at this time. So there may be to, to have some more dialogue uh, with those councils, with those leaders. And that would be especially true if this is your first campaign association-wide. And I, I, that, that, that's a good question. Uh, Dave or Paul, do you have an answer on that? Would you know that? I don't have an answer as to, in previous efforts, to what level were congregations utilized as a vehicle. I yeah. don't know. No. So there may be some ignorance or fear out there, and, and the best way to do that is share information and have a dialogue going. So it's not insurmountable, but it struck me as, as odd. So moving on to the next key issue is, is volunteer. Do we have enough volunteer leadership? Uh, reds are no's, yellows are maybes, and greens are, are yeses. So the question from the long form survey, will you encourage your own congregation to participate in a campaign? And here we have 19 is yes and 19 is no. So that kind of backs up the previous slide. However, however, we need to qualify this, and I, I saw this with a confidential survey, or I should say I heard it with a confidential survey, um, especially those phone interviews we had. Some of your supporters are out of state. Some of them are three or four states away. And for them to say, yes, I'll encourage my congregation, it just doesn't make any sense. So they would say no for that. So that may explain a little bit why we, we have some heavy no's here. Uh, this question, would you serve as a committee member? Would you serve in a leadership role? How about an overall campaign committee member? And then a campaign leadership role? And uh, so you, you can see the results there. This came from the confidential. So will you serve as a member of the campaign? 
and uh, we, we've found two people who would serve. All the others primarily uh, is, is a no on that. And if there's no response, we had a lot of no responses, and, and this would be uh, groups are people primarily outside, way outside your area. How realistic is it to raise dollars for the building projects long form survey? Uh, Nine million did not receive a lot of support for that. Up to a little bit with six million, and then even higher with three million. From the council survey, um, again, we asked them to rank priority one through five for each one. And you can see how, again, the results mirrored the previous two. Any issues that are out there? Uh, your level of support for Great Plains, 4.1. Uh, this is a positive. You have strong support out there. and. Uh, uh, those 63 that were returned ranked it uh, rather highly. How is Great Plains viewed by people in the community? And this would be a, a confidential survey. Uh, very well from their perspective, 76%. Uh, could be better. So you add those two together, uh, you, you have a high percentage there. How vital is Great Plains for the Lutheran community? So primarily your associated congregations, and again, that mirrors the, the previous one, your approach 90% could be very well. Uh, no graph here, except we have some numbers. And I took a look at leader survey participation rate. I, referred to this earlier, uh, the congregations presented through the pastor survey, 25 out of 46, 54 percent of the congregations were represented. I thought that was a very low number. We typically see a much higher percentage with area Lutheran high schools that we work with. Uh, the difference, the variable that we have here, uh, for example, working with, uh, let's say, Luther High School or Great Plains that we've done in the past, their congregations are all primarily with a 25, 30 mile radius. Obviously, you're about a little bit farther out. <laughs> the pastors, 56%, again, uh, a low number, uh, and we offered a couple teleconferences to connect with them. Uh, several offerings for the survey, and we did not get a high percent rate of return on that. Uh, we have found that pastors are key in terms of disseminating information, in terms of organizing congregations and getting them going and excited. Uh, so that, that percent rate is, is a concern that, that popped up. And then you can see the councils that were represented uh, again, a, a low response rate. So there, there are some things here, these numbers here, that I'm just not sure about. Uh, can we overcome them? I would hope so. Uh, but on the other hand, um, might these return rates be saying something to us too? A long form survey. Uh, are you willing to financially support a well-planned, organized, biblically-based campaign, 3.7? And uh, that, to me, that was a fairly positive number. Any, anything below 3.5 would be getting to, to begin on the low, so you're, you're in, in that area, but still positive. And then uh, level of support for Great Plains in a capital campaign survey. 3.8 for that long form survey. Pastor survey, uh, your expectation of your congregation's involvement, uh, 2.72. Again, that was from a, a smaller sample, smaller percent rate, but uh, so, some, some 
red flags again came up in my head to say, I'm a little surprised at that. And we didn't uh, interview uh, a quality interview with pastors to, to, to ask the follow-up, why is that? So it was a survey data coming in. And uh, as I read through the responses, there weren't many additional comments. Uh, the one that, that I heard most, read from, most from pastors was, uh, we're concerned about the dollar amount. And that, again, was based on the $9 million. Some obstacles on the confidential survey. Uh, we heard finances. <clears throat> and um, that was primarily concern for Great Plains to be able to handle the $9 million project. Uh, we heard economy. And that was primarily a personal viewpoint. My job is connected with the economy. The economy is not doing well. The most common one was the agricultural industry. And then uh, need or, or lack thereof of, of the projects. Uh, again, these were, were ones that were self-reported and uh, were, were the most common. How about timing? Um, are you considering another appeal besides Great Plains? On the long-form survey, we had 14 there, yes, 26 no, and, and 16 not certain. I wasn't quite sure how to read that. I think I have the council. I'm going to go to the next one. Now, this is a confidential. Let me skip one more. I'm going to come back. Okay. I'm going back to this uh, long form survey. Are, are you considering another campaign? And uh, they're not certain. I, I, I get that. Um, they're just kind of debating and not sure if they need one at, at, in their congregation or not. Uh, 26 makes sense with no. The 14, though, that popped up here, and then I'll go to the confidential, and you see the 13 that popped up here. The most common that we heard was, yes, my congregation is, and yes, I belong to St. Martin's in Watertown. Uh, St. Martin's uh, began a capital campaign this fall for uh, as a project that they have. A lot of your confidential interviews that we had are members there. So if you're a member of St. Martin's and you love your church and you're a financial supporter, friend of Great Plains, and you love your school, there's a tug there, there's a pull there. And in most cases, it wasn't an either or, it's yeah, we're committed to both, and therefore we can't overinvest with a gift at our church and with Great Plains, we have the same challenge, um, so we're, we're kind of in a flux here as to what to do. It's out of your control. It, it, as I say, it is what it is, and be aware of it, so we're aware. How may God be leading Great Plains at this time? Uh, 3.8 on the long form survey. So that to me is a, a positive that our people are saying, let's move forward with the campaign. And remember, they're thinking of the $9 million amount. So you gotta get that frame of mind in there too with, with these slides. Church Council. Uh, this is the one I was, I was looking for before. Uh, yes, we're planning a, a campaign, and 35 said maybe. And I, I, that struck me as the data came in, and we, I graphed it. But then I went back to the council surveys, and I started reading some of the comments. And I think what many of those 35 meant was this. We are struggling with our local congregation, and yes, we could use a campaign here, or we could use money here. So I think they equated it that way because just looking at some of the congregations where they came from, they're smaller congregations, and the chances of them doing a campaign, I think, are, are somewhat minimal. I, I could be wrong with that, and I was reading between the lines, uh, but I don't believe the pastors reinforced the, the amount that we have here. So we're back to the key issues again. This is a repeat slide. 
to summarize, and, and I'd like to stop here and just answer any questions that you might have on the slides, on the questions, the, the data interpretation. Here, if I'm keeping track of numbers correctly, there were 39 confidential, and you ask those 39 how Great Plains is viewed within the community, and you're talking about the community of Watertown? Correct. So how many <coughs> were from, how many are from the community? Oh. Approximately, was it, I mean you said 13 were from St. Martin's. In another slide, I'm wondering if that's about the number. I, I'm, I'm guessing, I, I'm gonna guess 20, 25 tops. 20. I was just going with the 75% favorable view. Mm -hmm. If I'm from Aberdeen, I can't, I can't have an opinion. I don't think. Right. Yeah. And we I we we filtered we filtered those out, or we didn't oh. ask those on the phone interviews. Okay. So with the phone interviews, I think we had maybe seven or eight. I, I think between Michael and myself. Okay. Thank you. Other questions. I guess with the, the pastor survey responses, I'm wondering if there's a correlation between the response rate and their distance from Watertown. Do you know that, or is that maybe something we could investigate further? If there's value in knowing, yes, those within 30, 45 miles, their response rate was whatever, 80% or 90%. I, I, that would be a good thing to investigate if the, the board decides to go to step B, implement a campaign. I think we've got to dig in and identify congregations, kind of match it up with the data. Uh, I, I also would recommend that we have a, a heavy communication informational sharing on the front end, especially with pastors, to uh, let them know how it will unfold in their congregation if we move forward with a campaign. I'll have a little bit about that coming up, but to me, more information on the front end is better than, than less. Other questions? Yes? Maybe more comment. You talked about not getting more counsel back, and I know one reason at least is I talked to some of my council members and they said, oh, we've already been interviewed. So they declined to do a second. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you wanted to survey from the same people or not, but that's one reason, at least by us, you did not get more council surveys. Appreciate that. Yes? With the pastor surveys, are those the pastors of our association churches? Are those the pastors of the Dakota, Montana district? Are those the pastors of congregations that send children and have sent children to Great Plains? <laughs> I believe we focused on the association pastors. Uh, at least that was what I had asked. Uh, and the reason for that is it's the association school. You're a pastor, you're a council, this is your school, you budget a, a certain amount or give dollars each year to the school. Uh, if you're doing a campaign, we're going to be asking the congregations to be involved. Janine? It was the association pastors plus nine other churches who send students to the school. If we were to implement a campaign, we would involve not only association congregations, but if we would have heavy student connection or whatever might be if there's a strong connection there's no reason why we can't include that congregation if they so desire to be involved with the campaign sharing information with God's people from their congregation yes. I think the long-term goal is to increase enrollment to like 160 students or something I don't know if I ever read that or if that's mm -hmm. in the survey is that realistic uh, the question is, is it realistic uh, with the vision statement that was presented to reach 160 students here at Great Plains grades 9 through 12? I'm going to be addressing that coming up, 
so if, if I can answer that in just a little bit, please. Good, good question, because it is a question that popped up, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Other questions? Okay, so let's move on. Our funding data, this is the total estimated funding amount. Uh, our range, 1.8 to 2.75. And you can see the uh, four surveys that we received. And, and primarily, uh, these three are the factual ones. Online survey, small dollar amount. Personal interviews, which we would expect the largest. Group survey. And then public phase range. Uh, by public phase, we would mean primarily congregational phase. So involving all of your congregations. And this is an estimated amount of uh, 300000 That is on the lower side. We've worked with some uh, Lutheran high schools where that amount is, was over a million dollars of dollars generated. Usually it's two to three hundred on the low end and then a million on the high end. So it falls somewhere between that range typically. And I'll break that down a little bit more, but that's how we're coming up with this public phase range. And our 1.8 then is taking all four of these surveys together. When we make recommendations, what we like to see is this. We like to see third, third, third to make 100%. On the right side, what we do is take a look at your 10 top givers, and then we take a look at the next 100 givers, and then the remainder of givers to make up our total. We, we didn't come with a one third, one third with the top 110. So we had 1.275 with the top 10, and then it dropped down to 370. So that was another reason for the lower amount of 1.8. And then best guess for the public phase, 300,000. Now there usually are variations with each section of this pyramid. Um, as, as things unfold. So we may see more funds coming from here and more funds coming from here, and perhaps fewer from here. But typically, that's the, 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 the setup, financial setup that we look for in a funding appeal. The uh, funding data, what we would like to do is, is to give uh, strategies for church leaders. In other words, options. Uh, one size doesn't fit all. So we'll give church leaders flexibility in connecting with God's people at the congregational level. Uh, we also give them flexibility uh, during a six-month period. I've worked with enough congregations to know that timing is everything and you fit their calendar. So we give three choices for them to plug in one of those three times, and they make the choice as to what, what time it is and then what's the best approach in connecting with God's people. There will be minimal expense for local ministries, and then training for all the 46 congregations that would be involved, and a hopeful goal would be the 200 to 600,000 range. So that's where I snatched that 300,000. I think I'm going to do one more. Um, additional funding options. We did a foundational support analysis, identified a, three or four foundations that you might be able to approach. Uh, that's in the full report that your leaders have. Uh, currently, uh, there's, there's no strong relationships that Great Plains has, has partnered with with any foundations. You know of some, but I don't think um, any funds have been received from foundations. So just to apply to a foundation, I'll just pick, say, Bill Gates Foundation. For you to jump in and to send that, you don't really have a relationship built with, with that foundation, 
the chances then of receiving gifts are, are pretty small. So we get asked that question a lot. What's, what, are, what about foundations? This foundation here in town has this much. Go to Sioux Falls, they have that much. And so we did the search and identified uh, some key indicators with, that would match up with those foundations, and we identified the foundations. Uh, the chances, though, again, of you being able to connect and receive some gifts would be more on the low side than the high side. Uh, I'm also recommending that you consider an enrollment increase uh, as an option for additional income, and that would help service any debt that you might have. And again, I'll explain that in just a little bit. So I think, yes, let me stop here then. Here are our projections of the recommended challenge and celebration goal. So let me stop here answer any questions that you might have on the funding side, the gift side. You're an easy group to please tonight. <laughs> Will you comment later, or is this the time now? What, what's meant by the challenge goal? Does my question make sense? Yeah, we, it, they're names. Special names. <coughs> we, we, we could have said A goal, B goal, C goal. The, the recommended, though, would be our recommended 1.8 million. And then the, the challenge would be another step up and, and celebration, uh, uh, yet another step. In order to reach those goals, some things would have to really open up in order to reach those where the Lord would, would bless you with additional income additional gifts. Typically what happens is organizations, churches, and schools typically don't begin construction until they have cash and commitments on hand. So you would know as a school if you follow that wise advice to say let's do our campaign first, let's see what we have in cash and commitments, let's build a financial plan, and then make a decision for our delegates to say, let's begin construction. Because once you big, begin construction, there really is no turning back. If you stop in the middle of construction because you don't have finances lined up, um, that is not a pretty sight at all. So that financial plan is key. This is the first step in getting to a preliminary financial plan. There really are three legs for a funding plan. So this is, this is more for your leaders. The three legs are this. Your, any, any building fund money you have. Cash and commitments is number two, usually a three-year campaign. And then the third leg is any additional borrowed money for that project. So those three legs typically make up the funding plan for your project. Now in some situations, schools have additional income or churches or elementary schools have additional income coming in various ways or they may be selling an asset which would give you a fourth leg. I'm not aware of anything here at Great Plains for that. Other questions on the funding numbers? Let me go back to any of those slides and explain them further. On the funding side? I'm sorry if I'm laughing because there were so many and I have no idea. Yeah, I, 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 I hear you. Uh, your leadership has a full report. There's a, 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 a um, packet that thick, and then also I have all the slides in, on a CD. So your leaders have that information and, and they can take a look and uh, analyze it. But I, there, there's a lot of data floating around. I got it. Moving forward then, uh, this is the graph that was on, in the case statement, and uh, the, the blue is your historical enrollment, and it's, it hovers right around 120, and then in, in the statement, case statement, we had a, a, a 160, and that was part of the vision statement that was approved 6, 12, eight, 18 months ago sometime to say that's our vision. We'd like to be able to have 160 students here. Uh, 
many, many people through the surveys and interviews said, what's the plan to get to 160? And so that was a gap that was, was in there. The hope for is 160, but hope doesn't get you more students. A concrete plan does. So how can you go about that? What is the plan? And I, I think it's accurate to say there, there is no specific plan in place right now. And if I misspoke, then our leadership can, can stand up and, and correct me in a little bit. I, I identified, though, some suggestions that came up or things that I observed. And uh, I, I said to President Mertz earlier this evening, yeah, I am going to address the enrollment. And uh, being in the role that I am, coming in, I can, can throw that hand grenade out and then walk away as it explodes because now you're going to have some discussion points. So there was a strong desire for increased enrollment. People generally said, we have a wonderful school here. We teach about Jesus. Our mission is gospel focused. Let's share the gospel with more and more people. So what are some possible enrollment efforts? Uh, number one, I suggest a, a, a strong, broad marketing effort, publications, uh, for the Partners in Education Tax Credit Program for South Dakota. Uh, that's an effort for low, lower income families who may feel that a, a private Lutheran high school is not within their needs. However, if they were made aware of this opportunity, that may be a reality for them. Number two, uh, invite non-well students to enroll. And that invite word is, is, is a rather broad uh, definition. You certainly accept non-well students now, I believe, but the invite would be, let's see if we might be able to connect um, with some other groups, especially groups perhaps in the Watertown area. There is a, a, a Watertown Christian School here in the city, Watertown, that has a K through eight program. Uh, my initial reaction would be, why not connect with them? Why not give them some information in terms of your school and uh, in, invite them for in terms of recruitment and uh, sharing enrollment information with them. Another option is to reach out to the uh, homeschool families. And uh, there are some of our high schools that are doing that. They're offering courses or extracurricular activities. And uh, you have some specialty courses. You think of your science courses, perhaps foreign language, uh, that there may be some, some homeschool parents, uh, uh, some of our Lutheran homeschool parents, who we could make use of great plains. And then uh, finally, uh, you certainly have the opportunity to expand your international program as well. So the thinking here is this, is that we're, we're, we're talking efficiency, we're talking good stewardship. If you have a teacher that has 15 students in the section, you have, let's just say, 10 empty desks. That teacher is going to teach whether it's 15 students, 18 students, 24 students in there. So if there are 15 in there and you have room for 25, doesn't it make sense in terms of resources for the efficiency of scale for that enrollment to increase? If you would increase 10, 15, or even 20 students, you multiply that times the tuition for each one of those students. Uh, and that's a, a, an income stream that's rather substantial to say, all right, we're, we're able to do a few more things around here, maybe in terms of building expansion or something else with that additional income. So that's uh, my addressing with the enrollment and encouragement to consider um, those avenues. Yes? I just wanted to add another thing that I think Great Plains does really, really well. And that's all these special uh, programs and activities that Great Plains hosts for elementary school students. 
And for example, uh, Panther Camp in June, um, we started with a grandson coming from Salt Lake City, but I hear over and, and it's not just those kids, but they love Panther Camp and that sold them. So we have five students from Salt Lake City currently, at which, so that's a way that's not on the list that I think we do really well. And then the Panther for a day and the kids get to come to school here. And maybe the only way that it could improve would be the follow up with those families who come. So you obviously you want to expand your current practices of connecting with your Lutheran elementary schools. What percent of students do we receive from the feeder schools of our LESs? Sorry to put it on the spot. I don't have that number in my that, head. And that's fine. Uh, what one thing that I would uh, I would do is I, I would take a look at your feeder schools and see if you can identify what percentage you usually receive from the feeder schools, and then go back to um, first grade for each one of those feeder schools and see if you have any bubbles coming up or to see if you have any lean years coming up from the feeder schools. Because those are the students that make up the majority of enrollment numbers here. And so if that's your base, analyze that base and, and statistically look at that. Other questions on enrollment? Okay. Timeline recommendation, uh, and this is just recommendation. Uh, I'm giving this to your board, and they may modify this. Uh, October, November, you have a delegate meeting coming up, first, first part of uh, November, November 4th. And whatever motions the board decides to give to the delegates uh, can be made at that time. I would suggest from November to January, you have a planning for building modification, reduced and perhaps multi-use. Uh, a $6 million chapel auditorium doesn't appear to be in the cards. Uh, might you go be able to build, let's say, a auditorium slash second gymnasium along with band and uh, Choir rooms within a, a wing, perhaps an updated kitchen, perhaps offices. So you wouldn't have a chapel, but perhaps you would have a scaled down place where you could hold productions, you could hold chapel, and it would double up as a second gymnasium. So it's a multi use that would get utilized. So that is an option. The other thing I wanted to say at this point is, is this, that your next building project is probably gonna be the next building project for the next eight to 10, 12 or more years. And so whatever building project you, you, you implement, it needs to carry you through those years. So, as you begin planning, to me, the, 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 the best stewardship approach is multi-use. Because it doesn't appear that you're going to be able to focus just on a chapel auditorium. And again, we're going back that that was really, the, the from the surveys, all the groups pointed to. We need space for an auditorium of some sort, band choir classrooms. The other option would be, let's do band choir classrooms and a second gymnasium. And, and maybe in the second gymnasium then it's performing arts center. But that again, that wasn't following what the, the recommendation was. My point is, multi-use. Then in February, uh, approval to, to begin the campaign, we, we would start with the silent phase. And uh, that would go from February to December 2018. And then uh, a communication plan with all the associated congregations. And what we're trying to do is achieve a positive first step 
with those two steps, the silent face and then also congregational contact. Step four, uh, in June, announce the public face, which really then would be the kickoff for the congregational face. So in the public phase, we engage the congregations. Option one would be September, October. Option two would be October, November. And then the third one would be January, February. So as you look at this, if congregations are implementing a campaign, let's say right now, they could plug in to the latest one or the, the farthest one out uh, to, to make that work. Or if a congregation had something going in the fall of 2018, and whatever that was, they wouldn't want to bump up with a congregational emphasis for Great Plains, they could move that then to, to January. Completion uh, of a task roughly uh, March, April 2019. So, we're at the end of all the slides. <laughs> I'll answer any other questions that you might have. Yes? Does the uh, amount of respondents you have to the surveys accurately reflect generally overall picture? In other words, the 21% the, the, the of the replies you got of the 300, do you find that would, you know, that the ones that didn't respond would probably respond similarly? I mean, be, because you're basing all your projections on that 21%, and I'm just wondering, or the 40, whatever percent was of pastors, and I'm wondering of if the ones that did respond would have, you know, differing opinions, be it positive or negative. Well, let's let's rephrase that and maybe make an a, a, a better statement. We we had over 212 pieces of data, 212 surveys that that came in. So let's not focus just on the 39 or the 23 percent, but that's 212 people who responded. That's that's quite a bit. That's a that's a lot of data, and we've worked with uh, high schools uh, double or triple your size with 230, 240 pieces of data. So based on what we typically see, yes. Uh, based on the response, if 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 I came in for a personal interview, I'm physically coming here or at St. Martin's. That's a commitment. If I sit down whether it's Rapid City or Sioux Falls or Henry, South Dakota, and I fill out that survey, that's a commitment, that's an effort that I make on my part. So you have some invested people. Now, these are some of your most invested people, friends, supporters, uh, that you have here at Great Plains. Do you have any idea or guess as to what the additional monthly expense will be for Great Plains, say that a loan is in, incorporated, and will we be able to do that on a monthly plan for the next 12 years? <laughs> that would be part of the, the uh, preliminary financial plan. So your board would want to set up a group to say, all right, what is truly our, our, our top dollar amount that that we hope to uh, invest in, in terms of construction. And, and the board, the, the ways to get around that is, you may not begin construction, let's say the spring of 2019. You may want to collect gifts another year so that you have a larger dollar amount in order to have a safer plan, financial plan, more conservative plan uh, for when construction does begin. So um, a lot of those questions that are way down there need to be way down there. And, and the thing I, I really share with high schools is it's really a step-by-step -step process as you go through the construction phase getting up to that point. The delegates always have checkpoints where they can say, yes, we're ready for this step, come back to us, we're ready for this step, and so forth. So your delegates would not pull the trigger, so to say, if you began a campaign in three months, 
they wouldn't pull the trigger, I wouldn't think, to begin building for at least another 12 to 14 months from that point, which was roughly 16 to 18 months from now. So it's a very, ought to be a very sequential step-by-step -step process. I don't believe that was the question. I believe the question was, what will it take to run it? If we're going to double the square footage, we're going to double our utilities, we're going to double our maintenance, we're going to double our cleaning. Um, it's all those things that it takes to run it. I believe that's what she was asking. Well, the whole total picture. What would so be, yeah. Are we... It'd be, the, the response would be the same thing. Your, your, your but, board needs to sit down. What we're saying is that if we get the money to build it, will we have the money increase as well to support it? Because I, I, all I, the donations have to go up. I understand the question. Yeah. Well, you you, still, you still need to take that financial plan and say, all right, here's the service of debt. We also have operational costs to include. How are we going to make that, and how is that going to be plugged in? Uh, I, I know typically, though, if you're doubling your square footage, you don't necessarily double um, maintenance and operational costs. There is an increase, but it's not going to be double. There is some efficiency that goes on. But again, that would be a, a board... Uh, responsibility to, to study that. I have two questions. One goes back to Mark's question about um, non-respondents to the survey. And I guess, would you agree that someone who's not going to respond to the survey isn't necessarily going to all of a sudden come forth with a large gift? Would you see that low percentage of respondents as an overall negative? Uh, maybe in, uh, the negative word would, would not be the best uh, word to use, but the numbers that we're recommending, 1.8, reflect on those responses from God's people who completed the survey. We wouldn't necessarily expect large surprise gifts from people who didn't respond to a survey. I mean, obviously... I've been doing this long happen. enough, and uh, we could say conservatively, yes. And so that's why we have the conservative number. Um, I've also been in situations where something happened, a gift out of the blue, and you just, you, you, wow, where did that come from? And, and my response is this, and, and this is a truism, whether it's at Great Plains or your local congregation. When, when leaders lead and take that first step, God's people follow, generally speaking. If the leaders are trusted and respected, and there's a good solid plan, when they take that first step, God's people follow, and what usually happens then is things begin to open up. God begins to open some doors that you didn't realize were there. And, and he's not necessarily opening them right now because you haven't taken that first step. So as you go about your planning, you're going to ask for God's guidance. You're going to ask him to bless your plans. And he's going to hear you, and he's got a plan for you. And as you go, and it may be a wavy curve as you're going along, but he's, he's going to give you direction. And, and my experience has been you keep plugging along until the door closes, a window is shut. And, and that's God saying to you, yep, we're, we're not going in this direction. Let's take a, another fork in the road. Let's take this fork. I have a second unrelated question. It's about multi-use facilities. Have you ever seen a facility that does a good job of being a fine arts and drama space with good acoustics and a gymnasium that we could go look at and say we want one of those? I almost can. Okay. Uh, the school I was principal at, Lakeside Lutheran High School, we designed uh, a concert uh, production room that was actually our main gym. So all band concerts, all choir concerts were held in the main gym, much larger than your gym here. So the school at that time, 400 students, 9 through 12. And what we did in, in order to get efficient, efficiency to scale said, we're going to double up our main gym, our competition gym, and we're going to have our band and choir concerts in there. Now we had two gyms. The second gym, the old gym, also had a stage, and that's where plays, uh, musicals were held. Everything else was in the main gym. Our chapel services were held in the old gym on, on bleachers. So, yes. How did it sound? Yeah, that's. 
Well, first of all, I'm not a real good music guy, so you're asking the wrong guy. But our, our music people, they said, yes, we, we're in favor of this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when we started the design and, and we had options, and they took a look at the options, and they said, let's, do, let's go this way. This makes sense. So there's sound uh, blocks on the walls to absorb sound. We invested in a good sound system in order to project that. We invested in a good stage system that, that had to be set up for each concert. But we did it. The athletic department, they understood that there were certain times of the year that they were going to be crunched for practice time. So they were willing to give in. And, and it was everybody coming together to say, if, we, if, if this is what we need to do and these are the resources God's given us, then let's go forward with that. I, I firmly believe if, if you connect with a design firm and give them parameters to say, we need to double up space, and this is the double up space, or we're looking for ideas as to how we can maximize that, come back and, and give us some options. That's what they do for a living. These, these architectural firms, design firms, um, they're, they're creative people. They, they get it, they understand that. And they want to please you, the customer, and so they're going to come back with some options on that. Yes? This is more for Pastor Mertz. Looking at the time and the fact that this isn't exactly the plan, you know, that we started out with, what would your plan be to come to the association meeting with and ask them to do? Because that's what you got two and a half weeks to retool your plan and ask for some kind of approval. Is that enough time? Oh, good question. I, in my mind, as I thought about it, I would envision coming to the delegates in November with a request to approach design firm or firms to develop a scheme for going forward with what was just kind of described with you know what with the resources that we have here are our prioritized needs what can we do with the resources that, that God has made available to us and then uh, there was some thought of, well, could you approve a campaign in November? My thought on that is, unless there's a, a specific plan to place in front of people, it would be very difficult to ask them to approve a campaign. So if we, if we go forward with design plans, come back with a, a plan, a design that makes sense to us, then bring that perhaps to a special delegate meeting three months down the road where a campaign would be either approved or not approved. And then we could still move forward very close to the time frame that was uh, shown on the slide with a February next step. Yes? In cases before where you have this many red flags and maybes but not very many greens, um, and now if we would take this and as Pastor Murray said, come take it to somebody else. The architect that drew up what we had has retired. Anyway, um, we get it all kind of figured out. We think, well, we think we could do it like this, but we think we're going to be more in that $3 million range, and we really don't know how to get it down to what you got. Do you go back out to the people and do what you just did again, or do you not do that? I, I would not. We're, we're, we're confident with the data that is, is here. Uh, there was strong support for uh, investing in a campaign here at Great Plains. There also was strong support saying $9 million is, is too much. You need to scale it back. I think if you came back with a scaled down version, and, and I'm not going to give you a number because that's got to be your decision as a board, whether it's $3 million, $2 million, or something in between. Um, and you came back, it would resonate with a good share of people uh, who would say, okay, they listened to us. They, they heard my voice. I guess that was part of what I was hoping you'd say. I was wondering how much do you think it helped our cause having this, uh, having you guys do what you did, that it helps get the people thinking and actually trying to relate to it, you know, how valuable was that just for future for us? Because they'll say, 
Well, I remember when I talked to him about this. I remember when we talked about that. It, when, when, when you give a substantial gift, and, and you can, de you can de decide in your head right now what substantial is, it typically isn't something that goes like that. You, you want to think about it. You want to pray about it. Lord says, when given a gift, each man should decide in his heart what to give. And, 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 and that passage that the Apostle Paul gives to us, it says, decide in your heart. We get the heart part. It's a free will offering. But the Lord says also, decide. Use your head. I want you to engage your entire being, your full commitment for this gift. And so when people begin thinking about a gift, we, we give them time. And in this case, people are started thinking about a gift, and some readily gave an indication, this is what I'd like to be able to give. And I firmly believe some of those folks that we asked are going to be probably giving more than what they had indicated. And if they're listened to and heard as you go through this process and come back, um, it only strengthens the reason for me to respond with a joyful, generous gift. So, no, I would not do another feasibility study. And, and yes, people do need time to work things through in their head. And sometimes that time is just timing in my life. Maybe we just paid off our mortgage or a car loan, and now funds are freed up that I didn't even think about six months ago that now I'm being asked for a gift, and I can continue that mortgage payment, but it's going to Great Plains. So some of it's timing and just helping people to see uh, where gifts might come from with their own personal finances. Coming up with some good questions. I like that. Thanks. All right. I will stay after for any additional questions that you might have. If you want to pick my brain some of you even more. Uh, as I said before, your leadership has uh, all the surveys, uh, any confidential survey or any survey sent in. Um, I, I eliminated the names, but uh, the scores are there, the graphs are there that uh, we can study. And then they also have full reports, too. Uh, so board members especially, if you would like to, to a little bit more information, um, you can see President Mertz on that. Thank you for your attention tonight. Thank you for coming as well. It has been a pleasure. On behalf of Michael uh, Fuchs and myself, we enjoyed uh, working with you. And the Lord's blessings as you go about the decision-making coming up in the next months. Final thank you, thank you, Jim, for being here and for presenting the information. Thank you to all of you for being here and for those who are watching as well. God bless you for the rest of the evening.